We humans like to think of ourselves as the dominant rulers of Earth. With the aid of advanced technology, our civilization has settled in every petrified pocket and withered wasteland in this wicked world. Except, that's not entirely true. As of today, humans can be found in significantly less than 1% of all the livable locations on Earth. I mean, besides the tallest mountains, the hottest deserts, and that creepy, snake-infested Brazilian island, we've pretty much built our homes everywhere, haven't we? Not even close, my friend. You see, more than 99% of the Earth's livable space is hiding beneath the ocean waves, and we haven't colonized any of it. There are over a billion cubic kilometers of water in Earth's combined oceans, and the Mariana Trench, the deepest point on the ocean floor, is a staggering 6.8 miles beneath the surface. Imagine you could stack 13 world's tallest buildings, Burj Khalifas, in the trench without reaching the ocean surface. Considering its sheer size, it should come as no surprise that the ocean is home to some 78% of the Earth's total animal biomass. Near the surface, that biomass comes in the form of animals that are fairly familiar. Whales, sharks, brightly colored fish, sexy mermaids, that sort of thing. But dive a little deeper, and a deluge of disturbing creatures awaits. At 400 meters, you'll meet the monstrous goblin shark, whose extendable jaws can be catapulted forward to engulf unsuspecting prey. Descend to around 1,000 meters, and a humorous respite awaits you in the form of the blobfish, a multiple winner of the Ugliest Animal Alive award. Sink further still into the shadowy depth of 2,000 meters below, and you'll encounter the ghastly gulper eel, a creature that brings new meaning to the phrase, all mouth and no trousers. But the abyss doesn't only harbor strange fish, it also breeds giants. Thanks to a phenomenon known as deep sea gigantism, many creatures that have evolved to live in the darkest ocean depths are significantly larger than species found in the shallows. Probably the most famous example of deep sea gigantism is the giant squid. Reaching a maximum length of 13 meters and weighing in at over 250 kilograms, this substantial cephalopod is literally hundreds of times larger than many of its shallow water cousins. The giant squid is a genuine monster of the deep, but it turns out this great giant has a great big brother, a much, much bigger brother, the aptly named Colossal Squid. Weighing as much as three times more than the already enormous giant squid, the Colossal Squid is the largest invertebrate on planet Earth, with eyes the size of basketballs and hook suckers capable of leaving sperm whales with permanent scars. But if that doesn't freak you out, check out the giant isopod. It might look like a giant version of your everyday woodlouse. A woodlouse is about a centimeter long and weighs next to nothing. But this beast can grow up to half a meter and weighs nearly two kilograms. Everywhere we look in the deepest, darkest depths of the ocean, we see a similar story. Familiar looking animals that have been mysteriously dino-sized like the Japanese spider crab with a leg span of up to 4 meters, and the giant oarfish, sometimes known as the king of herrings, which can reach a maximum length of around 11 meters. You heard it right, 11 meters. So just what the hell is going on here? What's causing deep sea species to grow so freakishly large? The truth is, we actually aren't 100% sure. You see, we're kinda clueless when it comes to the ocean's deep secrets. In fact, up until 2019, more people had walked on the surface of the moon than had visited the deepest part of the Mariana Trench, Challenger Deep. The sheer remoteness of deep ocean environments makes them, and the creatures that live there, incredibly difficult to study. However, we do have some surprising theories. The first is that food scarcity is the primary cause. The idea that a lack of food could somehow stimulate the evolution of larger animals might sound like nonsense. Surely the opposite would happen, right? But dig a little deeper into the science, and this apparent contradiction starts to make a lot of sense. Unlike almost every other ecosystem on the planet, the ocean depths have close to zero food production of their own. No light, 
means no photosynthesis. And no photosynthesis means no phytoplankton, which is the main producer near the surface. As a result, the primary food source in the deep sea is so-called marine snow. A deep ocean delicacy, marine snow is basically a mix of dead animals, decaying phytoplankton, and a whole load of fish poop that slowly drifts down into the abyss from the shallow waters above. Sounds delicious. Marine snow, supplemented by the carcasses of larger animals, is consumed as it falls, meaning the deeper you get, the less there is to go around. That makes food on the ocean bottom both scarce and unpredictable. There isn't a great deal of it, and you never know where the juiciest morsels will land. For a bottom-dwelling scavenger like the giant isopod, being bigger means it can cover larger distances more quickly, increasing its foraging radius and improving its chances of being the first on the scene when food arrives. Larger animals are also able to store more food than smaller ones, helping them to survive long periods without sustenance. Many deep-sea creatures have evolved extendable stomachs that allow them to take in the maximum amount of food on the rare occasions a solid meal presents itself. The results can be surprising. A giant isopod, with the catchy nickname Giant Isopod No. 1, once went five years without eating a single thing, presumably in protest at its imprisonment in the Toba Aquarium in Japan. Five years without food is undeniably supermodel tier dieting but these long fasts are made possible by another benefit of increased size, a more efficient metabolism. According to Kleiber's law, an animal's metabolic rate scales to the three-quarter power of its mass. To translate into normal person English, larger animals need less energy per unit of mass than smaller ones. A mouse, for example, needs to eat up to 20% of its body weight every single day to survive whereas an elephant only needs to consume 4 or 5% of its body weight. In other words, larger animals use energy more efficiently, and that is a massive bonus in an environment where food is scarce. The other main theory as to why creatures of the deep grow so big is related to temperature. Because cold water is denser and therefore heavier than warm water, it sinks, and that means deep sea environments are extremely cold. Frigid temperatures inhibit the speed of metabolic processes, decreasing the amount of food and oxygen required to sustain life. A slower metabolism is also thought to be part of the reason many deep-sea creatures grow slower and live longer than similar species in shallow waters. As an extreme example, recent research suggests that the bottom-dwelling Greenland shark may be able to live to well over 500 years old, making it the longest living vertebrate ever discovered. Just Think about that for a second. There may be a Greenland shark swimming around today that was alive when Leonardo da Vinci painted the Mona Lisa in the early 16th century. The idea that lower temperatures play a role in deep sea gigantism is backed up by the fact that we also see something similar called polar gigantism, a tendency for species that live in the frigid waters of the Arctic and Southern Oceans to exhibit gigantism, even in shallower waters. Sea spiders are a good example. In most parts of the world, sea spiders are relatively tiny, from a few millimeters to a couple of centimeters across. The Antarctic sea spider, on the other hand, has a nightmare-inducing 70-centimeter leg span, easily big enough to latch onto your face and inject thousands of babies directly down your throat. Similar massive increases in body size can be seen in polar sponges, worms, starfish, and even single-celled organisms. Okay, so we've got the food scarcity theory and the temperature theory, but there's also a far simpler reason deep sea species have evolved to get so big. There are significantly fewer predators down there. That's allowed Mother Nature to be a little bolder with the body sizes of species that might traditionally stay small to attract less attention from things that want to eat them. The truth is, there's probably no single unifying explanation for deep sea gigantism and different variables will play a bigger role in some species than others. It's also worth pointing out that plenty of abyssal creatures exhibit the exact opposite effect, deep-sea dwarfism, which is a clear indicator that this puzzle is unlikely to have a simple answer. Ultimately, the deep ocean is a chance to see how life somehow finds a way in one of the most inhospitable environments on planet Earth. Thanks for watching.